Okay, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. And firstly, I would like to thank Ada Lovelace Institute for having me here today. Uh, it's a great honor to participate in such an important event uh, celebrating women in STEM. So my name is Antonio Pontiki, and my assistant is Carla, who is one of our PhD students, who is helping me here tonight. Um, so let's get this started. Um, so I'm a teaching fellow as well as a biomedical engineer at King's College London. So I don't know about you, but uh, when I usually tell people that I'm a biomedical engineer, they just assume that we all make robots. That is definitely not the case for me, uh, partly because I'm weirdly interested in gory, bloody stuff, and also because I find robots extremely difficult and challenging. But here I am today uh, talking to you about making organs. Go figure. So, um, by a show of hands, how many of you know what is 3D printing? Oh, that is great. I think that's all of you. Perfect. <laughs> so if there's anyone who doesn't, uh, it's an additive manufacturing technology where we can convert a digital model to a physical object. And it is used in so many different fields and people use it to make plant pots and pencil cases, to plumbing parts, uh, to even building houses. And that over there is actually a 3D printed house in Germany. I don't know how stable it is. Don't ask me. Um, so we use 3D printing to make organs. There we go. So 3D printing in healthcare has a very significant role uh, for research to make prototypes, uh, to, create, to make equipment and tools, uh, but it's also used in surgery. And the main use is to create anatomical models, such as the ones you can see at the top right, uh, to educate students, for example, to learn anatomy. Uh, this is a anatomical heart, so with all the different structures, so we can teach medical students. We can also use them uh, to educate clinicians for a complicated case before they go into theater. We use them to test new technology we develop uh, when we someone else, not me, develops a robot. Um, we can test it on, the, on these anatomical models rather than using animals, let's say, uh, before we use it on patients. And my field focuses on using these models for surgical training and planning. So instead of sur surgical trainees using VR, which in my opinion is not very realistic, um, or textbooks, and rather than using animals or cadavers that involves a lot of ethical concerns and really high costs, we can use surgical training uh, models such as, well, this actually. Uh, <laughs> I brought this here. I think it was much easier to see um, in person than on the picture. It's a rib cage. We have a lung as well, a heart underneath. Um, you're all more than welcome to have a look at it closer later. Um, to practice lung cancer, well, lung cancer surgery on it. So uh, we can also use 3D printing to create implants. So those can be artificial, so made out of a metal, such as the one you can see on the right, which is a mandible, a jaw, uh, made out of titanium or ceramics. But they can also be made using bioprinting, which is a highly emerging technology at the moment where there's this gel-like material that comes out of a little tip, but it includes stem cells, so human cells, and that can, at the moment, grow into a living tissue, but hopefully in, I don't know how many years, uh, the sooner the better, uh, it can grow into a fully functional organ. Which brings me into the little white uh, green bits that you guys are holding, or will be holding soon, hopefully they're going around. Um, which is what I've been working on for the past six years. So I make patient-specific, customized ribs for lung cancer or breast cancer patients. So patients with advanced uh, cancer undergo something called unblock resection surgery, which is basically they, they cut out <laughs> a part of their chest, um, ribs, muscle, soft tissue, two more, all in one go. 
So before they go into surgery, they have um, a CT or an MRI scan. So basically, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's an image of their inner part of the body to visualize the size of the tumor, its location. And I use that scan to create a 3D model of the structure of interest. So that is, in my case, the ribs or sometimes the sternum. And image, using a process called image segmentation. I'm not going to bore you with the details, very nerdy stuff, but basically we just paint, let's say, on the structure of interest. So as you can see, some parts here are, are red. So these are cross-sectional areas of the ribs. And we paint on them and we make a 3D digital models of the ribs that are going to be resected and reconstructed in surgery. Yeah. So this is our 3D uh, digital model, which we then 3D print. So these 3D printed parts are just made out of a regular plastic, very safe, very cheap. But just to clarify, this is not what goes in the patient. So <laughs> these are the plastic parts that are just used uh, as a step to create a silicon mold, which is basically a negative. Um, that has a cavity in the shape of the ribs that are going to be resected and reconstructed. That silicon mold is going into surgery and it is filled in with a bone cement. So what you are holding or have held is the bone cement. So you're actually um, holding real, well, replicas uh, of ribs that have gone into real people. Um, so the next picture, is quite graphic. Uh, it's a picture of the ribs that after they've been implanted in the patient. So please do look away. I will tell you when it's safe to look again. It's just one picture, but don't think the committee or the next speakers will be happy with me if I make half the audience faint. <laughs> so graphic picture coming up. Close your eyes if you don't want to see it. So these are the ribs that have been implanted in the patient. Uh, and they are attached to the remaining, because we never reconstruct a full rib, it's just a section of it, so they're stitched basically to the remaining part of the rib cage. So this has become, it's safe to look again, <laughs> um, this has become a part of routine patient care in our hospital, and there is more than 20 people uh, walking around with ribs that I've made for them. Uh, sadly... Uh, Uh, sadly, though, um, I only came up with the idea of engraving them after I had made all of them. Uh, one, after one patient, the latest one, asked me if I had signed the ribs for him, and it was very, very sweet, but it's something to keep in mind for the future. So these are just some examples. Uh, a sternum on the left for a breast cancer patient, uh, two sternum and rib reconstructions at the top for large uh, lung tumors and lung lung cancer patients at the, the two uh, ribs at the bottom. So what does the future hold for 3D printing in surgery? Uh, and that is, in my completely unbiased opinion, anthropomorphic models for surgical training. Anthropomorphic models is a, just a fancy word of saying uh, fake body parts. And that is an example over here. Uh, so this is a chest simulator or chest model where um, thoracic surgical trainees can practice um, lung, lung cancer surgery, either with handheld tools or even robotic surgery, compatible with that as well. In the middle, we have a male urogenital uh, simulator for penile implant surgery for um, patients with erectile dysfunction. And... That is an ongoing project, and on the right, we have a throat simulator, so it might be a bit diff more difficult to recognize. Uh, the bottom red part is a trachea, which is your airway, basically, and the thyri thyroid at the top for laryngology procedures, which is anything that involves the vocal cords, your airway, the esophagus, which is a tube where you swallow. Um, and we're also building a liver simulator, cardiac simulator Carlo is working on, and... Basically, what my team and I, and my supervisor, who's sitting over there, um, is what we're trying to achieve is use 3D printing 
to shape the future of surgical training and have a social impact in healthcare. Thank you very much.